What's up, challengers? Welcome to the gym. My name is Jim Leader Geo, and this is the San Francisco Giantes team prep for week 10 of the fifth season of the GBA as we go up against Crimson Seabed and his team, the Detroit Steel Wings. Uh, Crimson Seabed, aka Chase, uh, is uh, a good friend of mine, good friend of the channel. I really like this guy, and uh, I love that he's a part of the league, and I really cannot wait for this battle. It's going to be, it's going to be really fun, and he's got a team that's just <laughs> so so hard to prep for because it's it's very unique um any of his pokemon could come he's got a really well-rounded core of really dangerous middle tier pokemon a couple of top tier ou threats and it's it's hard to prep for guys i'm i gotta be honest i went through a lot of iterations of my team opting to bring uh, a lot of different pokemon in various uh, builds of the team but ultimately, I always felt like some of them were lacking and not effective enough at what I needed them for. And I had to just eventually pick, I say, what six do I think he's bringing? And that kind of guided me to the team that I built today, six or seven. Um, and so uh, I'll go over the six that I'm bringing and I'll go over their specific sets and his 11 Pokemon and talk a little bit more specifics there. This is the second time I'm recording this. I recorded it once. And there wasn't a problem with it, but I felt like I was statter... Stattering? <laughs> I was gonna say staggering and then stuttering, but kind of both uh, over my words a little bit. Now, let's go over my six Pokemon. We've got Cuddles, the Mega Pinsir, Decisions, the Entei, the Red One, the Latias, Eggington, the Blissey, Don Quinn, the Rhydon, and Nato Nato, the Hippowdon. His 11. As you can see on the side of the screen, the right side of the screen, right under his name, he's the Detroit Steel Wings. He's got the Suicune, the Electros, the Latios, the Mega Charizard X, the Crocodile, Star Raptor, Infernape, the Roserade, the Cradilly, the Dusclops, and the Glaceon. So, uh, a couple of overviews of our teams. Things you might look at immediately in a face-to-face a -face matchup and a team prep and sort of plan your strategy around. One, I am very weak to ice this week. Very weak to ice. My only resist is decisions. That said, the only real ice typers on his team are going to be Glaceon. There's no way Glaceon comes. Um, straight up, Eggington walls it. Let's just put chapter done, uh, the entire book done. Throw the book away. There's no way Glaceon comes. Glaceon's not a very... Not a great Pokemon in this format. It's too weak to too many things. Its defenses aren't good enough. It's not fast enough. It has very high special attack. Don't get me wrong. It hits as hard as Latios. Uh, and with a very good offensive type. But it's too easy to check it. It's too easy to answer it. Eggington walls it for days. So I'm not worried about it. The other I potential ice types uh, that I really would expect... Mm, ice Beam on the Latios or Ice Beam on the Suicune. Not really a big reason for him to bring the Ice Beam on the Latios because most of the time, it's better for him to just go for Draco. Uh, let's look at it, for example, against a Nato Nato. Just go for Draco, man. What are you doing? Uh, the super effective Ice Beam is base 180 power. It's 90 doubled up to uh, 180. The Draco being a 140 power attack with Stab, you add another 70 onto that, it's already higher. What is it? 210. So, why wouldn't you go for Draco? It's going to hit harder. It Maybe it can't one-shot. You can double things up if you're going for Life Orb hits. You can do lots of things there. It's it's There's no point in him bringing it, as far as I'm concerned. So, it would be on the Suicune. Suicune's Ice Beam does not hit very hard. Suicune has a base stat, a uh, special attack stat of 90. It's not going to hit very hard. I'm not worried about it for my team. If someone does have it, it can net me a good switch in decisions because he doesn't really have a very powerful ice type threat here. Could run the hidden power ice on Electros. I don't think it learns ice beam. Uh, I'm sure there's ice potential in other areas of his team, but ultimately it does not concern me. Uh, maybe an ice punch on like the Infernape or something. Uh, hidden power ice on the the Roserade. In general, as far as uh, looking at this team prep is concerned, if it's a special ice type attack, Eggington's gonna wall it. If it is a physical ice type attack, it is, uh, or like an ice fang from Crocodile, generally speaking, they might as well have just gone for their stab, and my physical walls are better off against it. So I'm not worried about my ice weakness. Um, I know that Don Quinn and Nato Nato share a lot of weaknesses and I'm going to go over them. I'm going to start off by going over them. 
part of the reason I mentioned earlier that I had a difficult time team building at first and had to switch my team around so much is that I was very concerned about a few Pokemon. Uh, Suicune can win games if it's a Crocoon set, and so I was like, I need to, I cannot let him win with Crocoon. And I really think Suicune comes, it's very powerful defensively, it's very effective at what it does, and Cuddles and Decisions have a little bit of a hard time against it. Cuddles, however, can set up a Swords Dance on its face, and his only response to that is, please get a burn, please get a burn, please get a burn, with Scald. Scald is a 3-hit KO at best against Cuddles, so I could Swords Dance once if he gets the burn, Swords Dance again, and I'm in the same boat. I can hit this thing for, um, for more than standard damage with the return. Um, I was considering running Facade, but again, I started thinking, I had to think to myself, you cannot overprep over for just one Pokemon if that Pokemon is Suicune. Suicune is only truly threatening to my team if it starts setting up Calm Minds. But if it sets up Calm Minds, it's lacking in a coverage move, uh, or either in a coverage move or in a support move for itself. So looking at Suicune, some of the things you can see on some of its sets. Um, if it runs kind of a bulky set without setup, it's going to need rest. It will probably want sleep talk too, unless he wants to just sit in there, but I really do not think he wants to do that because I have a Cuddles who can set up Swords Dances on it. So, But I do think it needs that recovery to truly be effective. If it's just kind of running bulky or especially offensive, it's not going to hit hard enough to really threaten anything. And I'll immediately establish that and then Eggington walls it for days. If it's, yeah, if it's like especially offensive calm mind, it's not defensive enough to withstand hits from cuddles and decisions. And it's not offensive enough to two hit KO them back. I'll outspeed them. I'll be able to take them on that way. Eggington will be able to take it on if it doesn't have rest. If it does have rest, it'll probably have sleep talk. If it has both of those things, there's only two moves left. One of those is going to be Scald. What's the fourth move? Ice Beam to potentially help against the red one who would also take it on without it. Ice Beam's not going to hit it hard enough. Toxic, I have Heal Bell on my Eggington. Uh, Calm Mind, then it's fully walled by Vaporeon. And there is the crux of it all. I'm not bringing Vaporeon because that's pretty much all Vaporeon does is answer his Suicune and I think he knows that and I think for that reason he doesn't bring a set that would easily be walled by Vaporeon or I mean Vaporeon walls it one way or the other. It just turns into a stall match and so I think I don't think it's a Crocoon set. I don't think he's bringing Scald, Calm Mind, Rest Sleep Talk. I don't think he does that uh, and if he does I am prepared to take it on with my offensive threats, and that is my answer to Suicune. I'm not over-prepping for it, and that's why I'm not bringing Vaporeon. Looking at the rest of his team, Vaporeon doesn't match up well. Electros, its its stab will take me on too well. Um, looking at the the Latios, Psy Shock, after I take a little bit of damage, it's a two-hit KO against... Vaporeon, and since my only recovery is Wish Protect, I can't get any immediate recovery off to try and stall it out of it. It would mean I have to take two Psy Shocks before I get that Wish up. I would have to pack Protect, which is not a bad thing, but it just, after a little chip damage, no one stays at full health in this game. You know, I, I take a little chip. I'm not trying to wall. That's not how I play, guys. Even though I have very defensive Pokemon, they serve a purpose. That is to provide me with a safe switch, when they get that safe switch, they either threaten out a Pokemon or take some advantage back to uh, momentum advantage back to me so that I can get in with my physical or my offensive threats and really pressure my opponent. I have very powerful offense and my opponents need to prepare for it one way or the other. Um, so where was I going? Where was I going with this? Vaporeon, yeah, I'm not looking to get into a stall match, uh, trying to do things like that and if the Latios is offensive the Psy Shock will take it out so or the Draco will if I'm fully defensive he can alternate between a Psy Shock and then Draco and I can't take it on. Mega Charizard X I do resist the Flare Blitz which is worth noting because that's his most powerful attack but uh, it can I can't really two hit KO it so it could Dragon Dance after I come in on a hit kill me with the Dragon Claw at plus one while I can't two hit KO it back. Crocodile, it's, if it's offensive, it hits, or even if it's just kind of a bulky 
a bulky set, but with a little bit of uh, offense investment, it'll take on Vaporeon. Staraptor, I can't handle it. The Infernape, it really depends on the set. I think Infernape is better to go physical this week. It's a good answer to Eggington. Uh, close Combat will take on some of my Pokemon pretty well. Notto Notto, I think, can survive a two-hit KO from that, but it also learns Grass Knot. So I think it packs Grass Knot. Whether it goes Mix Ape or Physical Ape, I don't know for sure. But I don't think it goes special because it knows that my special walls would just be too safe to switch into it. So there's that. The Thorn, again, its stab is super effective against the Vaporeon. Vaporeon, and then you start coming to this realization. There's no point in me bringing Vaporeon if it's just a check to Suicune. I checked it in other ways. Let's not overdo this. That was the exact same mentality for the, um, the Amoongus and why I'm not bringing Amoongus this week. Too many things take it on. It, it's a pretty good switch to the Electros unless it packs Flamethrower. And it's a pretty good switch to several other things, unless this. It doesn't handle the Earthquake from the Crocodile. So why am I bringing this Pokemon if it's only really going to check one threat? Even if I think it's a very big threat, I have answers to this threat. I have answers to Suicune. I, sh I don't need a full team of six Pokemon to take on a Suicune. I just need a few. So, looking at that, I started thinking to myself, what is my biggest issue against his team? His physical threats, actually. Nato Nato can can take on one of them, maybe, but I'm not going to be left healthy. And there's two of them in particular that have the potential to take me on. And we, my sets are very specific this week, um, and I'm going to explain. This is where it comes down to. Nato Nato can wall his physical offensive threats. I can, I can slack off on. Uh, on a Brave Birding Staraptor unless it's Choice Banded. That's where Don Quinn comes in. Don Quinn is completely safe from this Staraptor. Staraptor can pack Close Combat. Close Combat against this set cannot one-hit KO me. It doesn't even come close. It's uh, Even a crit wouldn't one-hit KO me, but it can two-hit KO me. That said, in a one-on-one -on -one matchup, if it goes for close combat, I kill it with Rock Blast. If it opts to not do that, and this is only if it's banded. If it's not banded, I mean, it could be Life Orb, but I'm not worried about it being Life Orb because you go for close combat, take some damage. If it's Life Orb, Nato Nato can wall it. It's just if it's banded. And I don't think he brings banded ultimately, but uh, I need that check in case he does. Uh, Eggington is also a weird check because if he opts to go for a Brave Bird to take on, a abandoned Brave Bird to take on Nato Nato, uh, I can switch into Eggington next and he will kill or come very close to Eggington, but he also does 75% of his own life in recoil damage. So awesome, 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 awesome. And part of the reason that I'm, I'm doing that with, uh, with Blissey, Nato Nato will wall it. The Charizard X, I can also wall unless it's adamant. If it's adamant, tough claws at not at plus one, just standard two flame or two flare blitzes will kill me. This is why I am bringing adamant cuddles this week, because that is a base 100 speed Pokemon. If it's adamant, I can be adamant too. If it's jolly, it cannot two hit KO Nato Nato. I can come in, I will see the damage, I'll say that's jolly, and I'll be able to just roost on it or slack off on its face. If it tries to set up a plus one, I'll be at full health. It's still gonna be a two hit KO for it, and I can earthquake it. And if it doesn't kill it, it comes damn near. He's forced to take the two hit KO on Nato Nato. I come in and I revenge it. And this is maximizing the amount of damage I can do with quick attack. Other Pokemon on his team that I need to look at the speed tiers for and consider whether or not I need to bring a Jolly or Adamant Cuddles. He has a base 100 speed in the Staraptor and the Mega Charizard X. If There's a good chance Staraptor is scarfed and it's going to force me to switch around. I'm not going to feel comfortable that I'll outspeed it no matter what until I've learned its item. So... For that reason, I want to have the hardest hitting quick attack I can. Uh, Infernape outspeeds me, unless it is an offensive nature. If it's an offensive nature, and I'm jolly, yes, I outspeed it, but more importantly, I can one hit KO it with a quick attack if it is, if, uh, if I'm an adamant nature. And while I have a chance to do it if I'm jolly, it's a much, much, much lower chance. 
Uh, the Latios is going to outspeed me no matter what. And a lot of the other Pokemon that fall into that middling 90 category are amazing Pokemon to Scarf. Crocodile, Roserade, those are very good Scarf Pokemon. Even Glaceon could be Scarfed, but again, I have an answer to Glaceon. Um, the Crocodile and the Roserade are both very common Scarfers, and I've seen them Scarf before, uh, especially in League play. So I need to look into that. Um, and for that reason, I've opted to bring the set of Nadonada that I have, bringing Don Quinn with it, because that allows me answers to his physical threats. I feel very confident in my ability to take on the Mega Charizard X and the Staraptor and the Crocodile by having all of these Pokemon. They, even though they have really similar types, they complement each other really well, because Don Quinn can take on the Mega Charizard X and the Staraptor beautifully. Doesn't really need help. Except in weird scenarios where I get predicted on my switch, maybe the Staraptor goes for a close combat with a band, then I can switch into Nato Nato, who will not be two hit KO by that attack and I can threaten it out. Um, also the Crocodile, if it's going for an Earthquake, Don Quinn can't really handle that and doesn't want to get knocked off. Nato Nato can handle that and doesn't mind getting knocked off. So. As far as physical threats are concerned, they do complement each other very well because a weakness of one is not a two-hit KO on the other. So by using both of them in conjunction, I handle his offensive threats very well. The mixed ape, I'm going to have to take on a little more offensively, and that's where Cuddles being adamant comes into play. Uh, and also the prediction about the it being a jolly or an adamant Mega Charizard X. Um, so now let's kind of look at the other end of the spectrum, the offensive end. I'll just go over movesets real here, real quick here. Earthquake on the Nato Nato is his standard stab. It hits really hard against um, his Mega Charizard X, which is important. Rock slides that are not getting walled by things that are flying or levitate. He has three of those on his team. Uh, it also one hit KOs the Staraptor. Uh, I have Stealth Rock because I'd like to get rocks up and I definitely see opportunities to do so. And then I have Slack Off to provide me that sponging capability. Don Quinn, Earthquake, Rock Blast, Dragon Tail, Rest. The set I have here with the HP and Defense investment is the minimum possible investment I can have to guarantee that Charizard X cannot two-hit KO me. Even, not even a chance. 0% chance to two-hit KO me even at plus one. Uh, it's a four-hit KO on me at best. Uh, on the in switch, so I am very safe against the Mega Charizard X with Don Quinn. Dragon Tail can phase it if I predict it's going to switch. I'll probably go for that, even though the Earthquake does one hit KO the the Mega Charizard X. I would rather go for the Dragon Tail to phase out, kind of see what he wants to bring in on it. Uh, most notably, I would predict the Suicune. And Rest is there just um, because I have the Blissey here, who can heal Bell it away, and I. You know, it'd be nice to have that option. I don't really need the fourth move coverage. Earthquake, Rock Blast do well enough. And the things that I would use coverage for, I'd rather just Dragon Tail out. So, Eggington is coming. Seismic Toss over Toxic because Toxic only really going to be a better option than Seismic Toss for me in this circumstance against the Dusclops, who, of course, uh, is uh, does not get affected by the Seismic Toss. But I'd rather just wish and go into something more offensive like uh, the decisions if or the, maybe even the cuddles if he opts to go for a burn on the cuddles and i can heal bell it off or something you'll see here i have wish and soft boiled very specific reason look at my ev spread here i've got 20 in the speed stat to guarantee that i outspeed a speed creeping uh, electros unless it really wants to blast into speed like blow right by me props to you if you want to spend a you have to spend a lot of evs to do that if he wants to speed creep uh, a blissey he's got to put i think 160 into speed so uh i pop up 20 because you know if i'm only at four it's he, he goes to 77 i go to 78 just to just to play around with it a little bit he would have to over speed creep me i'm making him waste uh evs here and i'm only dropping one point in and HP and defense to do so. Uh, running bold with max HP and defense to take on Psyshox from the Latios as best as possible. Eggington is huge this match. And part of the reason I want the Seismic Toss is I want the immediate pressure. I don't want to be toxicking and, and things like that. And also, Eggington's a really good answer to the, the Roserade. A really great switch into the Roserade. Um, and I wouldn't be able to do anything with it if Toxic is my move of choice. Need the heal bell, really want to be able to remove any potential 
burn spreading, he has Willow options on the Dusclops and the Mega Charizard X if it's a bulky set. He has the Scald, um, potentially Poison from the Roserade if it's, I mean, it could run Toxic if it's defensive, it could run Toxic Spikes or regular Spikes. He could very easily uh, hazard stack me. So uh, part of that reason is why I have the Defog on my Latias, even though it is a Choice Scarf Latias. It is max speed, timid nature with max special attack to keep it as offensive as possible while ensuring that I outspeed his entire team. Uh, 110 is the fastest Pokemon. The fastest Pokemon he has is base 110 speed, which is the Latios. We could have a twin v twin match up here. Uh, if he is Scarfed on his Latios, I don't see him doing that. But if he is Scarfed on his Latios, we will speed tie. Either of us will kill the other with a Draco Meteor, and um, and we, we gotta live with that. But if he is Scarfed, then he can't kill Blissey. He needs an offensive item like a Life Orb or a Choice Specs in order to take on Blissey with the Psy Shock. So I think this is a pretty good check to a lot of his team. Since he traded the Registeel, he has zero Dragon Resist, so I can pop off Dracos and not have a problem with it. Psy Shock is because the Pokemon that are weak to my Psychic Stab are uh, Roserade and his Infernape, both of which get hit harder on the physical side uh, with Psy Shock. Actually, I guess Infernape would get hit hard, just as hard on the psychic side, but it, I'd rather have the, the hit on the physical side coverage in case he opts for um, maybe Assault Vest varieties of some Pokemon. Energy Ball is because, uh, like I said before, I want an offensive answer to that Suicune. Energy Ball does that. The reason I opt for Energy Ball over Thunderbolt is that, I mean, they both hit the same. Energy Ball has the chance for a defense drop, and more notably, if he is determined that I'm choiced and sees me go for Energy Ball, that's a free switch into his Crocodile who could Pursuit Trap me. So, I don't want to do that. Uh, I need to I need to keep the fear on for him, but I really see Latios, Latios uh, catching some things off guard and popping off a couple of Dracos is going to really help me out. My Offensive Core! Cuddles and Entei, push the button guys. The decision set is very standard, I know you guys have seen it before. 4 HP to make it that at level 50 I can survive one extra switch into rocks. Uh, max attack has to be adamant nature because I wanted sacred fire and E speed and then max speed. Um, I don't need to get creative with decisions. He doesn't have a super deep move pool and in almost every scenario you click sacred fire. If he super resists sacred fire, can I get a burn? Might still be worth clicking. I have the E speed because I really like to have that powerful, powerful uh, priority as a backup move to help clean up some things that maybe get weakened uh, to prevent sweeps. Stone Edge is good coverage for things that uh, resist the sacred fire. Uh, actually looking at the team, maybe only Suicune would I want to go for the Stone Edge on. And then Toxic because I, I really didn't need the fourth move. The only time you ever use a fourth move in that slot might be Iron Head, might be Bulldoze. It's only if you resist the Sacred Fire and the Stone Edge and uh, are weak to the other one. That would be the only circumstance that it's really worth it because otherwise Sacred Fire, it being Stab and the hardest hitting move he's got, I don't need the coverage in other places. So we do run uh, a pretty standard decisions and his goal push the button get some early damage onto a lot of things make it that he will lose a defensive versus defensive matchup let my defensive pokemon whittle down until cuddles or decision or the red one can sweep up mid to late game cuddles as i said before about the, the reason i'm running adamant um because i need to play careful around his speeds and adamant will give me more power behind my priority and um running return quick attack close combat and Swords Dance. Uh, I do see a couple of opportunities to set up a Swords Dance, most notably against Pokemon like maybe a Latios if I've seen it go for a Draco, um, or Cradilly, potentially the um, Roserade, or the Suicune are big ones, big areas for me to potentially set up a Swords Dance and win. So uh, I think I've covered pretty much everything uh, gun to my head if I had to pick the Pokemon he's going to bring. I, I kind of have it on the right hand side here in order from most to least likely. With the caveat being that the Latios and the Mega Charizard X, they're not both coming. I don't think he brings two dragons. Um, he could. I also don't think he brings two fire types. I don't think he brings the Mega Charizard and the Infernape. I think he brings one or the other. And 
Honestly, I think he probably brings the Latios over the Charizard X, but I had to pre prepare for it anyway, because if you're not prepared for a Charizard X, that thing will sweep teams. That thing is very powerful. So I'm I'm prepped as such. So I think he brings the Suicune as a defensive check to Decisions and Cuddles. I think he brings the Electros. It's a great way for him to gain momentum. And uh, it's got great coverage. It's a very middle ground play to put a little bit of damage on a lot of things. I don't have... It's hard for my team to truly say that it has a safe switch into it, especially if he's on his on his A game for predictions. Uh, the Latios, I think, is coming. I think the Crocodile is coming. I think the Staraptor is coming. And I think the Infernape is coming. And I think he, he presses the button very hard on the physical side of things. And that's why I brought two physical Mons, even though they have very similar typing. Uh, I'm not super worried about the things that they are weak to. Uh, I, the only water types he's going to be bringing a Suicune, and I have my answers to that. So, I feel pretty confident about this team. It took a couple of iterations to get it going, but I am confident with it. So, um, please stay tuned to the channel. Hit that subscribe button and check out the video. It's going to be going up tomorrow. If you guys are interested in checking out Chase's channel and watching his team prep and his version of the battle against me, go check out his channel. I will leave a description to that in the... I will leave a link to that in the description down below. As always, my name is Jim Leader Geo. You guys are the challengers. Thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you guys next time.